steampunk modding, and they're going to show you some of their work and some maybe tips and tricks and some cool stuff. So please welcome them with a big round of applause and enjoy the show. Inventions are driving us and our social life. Inventions are driving our urban life. We are going to show you some inventions the Victorian style. Inventions that could be if the aesthetic of the Victorian area would be reflected in our modern technolo technology. Let us put you through a journey to, to, to a steampunk, through our world of steampunk, modding and styles. This journey will be presented by my good friend, Mr. Admiral, Admiral Ravensdale, and my honorable colleague, Horatio Steam. Thank you. <laughs> Can we put the micro a little bit down? Yeah, we, yeah. We are too close together. What, what, what is steampunk? Uh, steampunk is a genre. Steam, steampunk are fiction. Steampunk is uh, steam-powered fashion and culture. Steampunk has to do with airships, uh, with science and speculative fiction, and it's a lot of fun in building such stuff and using it. Steampunk uh, has an alternate history. Steampunk has nothing to do with authenticity. It's absolutely uh, an amazing hobby to build complete crazy stuff. Let me pass you over to my, my friend. Uh, I live in Dortmund and my daily business and my daily business um, is product management of car parts. Okay. Okay. If you wonder about my right arm, uh, I had an accident last week. Um, I make a crash with my mountain bike. Um, the doc said Next weeks. Today I will show you some of my newest and best inventions. But first I will start with some key points about steampunk. Our, our steampunk design workshop built and develops the most modern technical equipment, fine jewelry, futuristic devices implemented with the founts and materials out of the Victorian era. You will find latest technology, clothing, accessories, and in the style of steampunk. Let yourself be inspired by my technical achievements or simply copy them for yourself. Make sure that you always be... Um, okay, start again. <laughs> for many devices you will find detailed building plans on many useful ideas on my website. So be sure to check it before you start with some project. Share your knowledge. This is the main reason in the steampunk genre. Um, without the, the sharing of knowledge, nobody can learn anything. Maybe we have fun to rebuild or improve something of what you have done and or develop. Be a strong and important year in the do-it-yourself membership. One of my main targets is to fight against the throw away society. Many of our daily devices are still good and work properly, but they throw them away because they don't use the latest technology or they are only out of date. To spend them a second life or hold them longer in use or only use them, it's only a small detail necessary, design and style. Without design and style, it has no value. 
when you give uh, all parts a, a design and a style. I just want to check if you're hearing in the back. No, okay. So I'm going to hold this, or do you want to hold it? Okay. Design and, st design and style. <laughs> the design and style of the device makes the value of it. Like you will see in my further presentation, I nearly, nearly always use wasted materials or recycle old devices to create new parts or improve them. Every part which is not thrown away will save our nature. Some weeks ago, I heard a radio report um, about the lack of creativity and inventions in Germany. The speakers say that it depends on our society. Nearly all is available for nearly everyone. Nobody must sit down and think about what must I do to build it or get it. Without the pressure on thinking how I can construct something, we forget the meaning of inspiration, invention and creativity. In the future, development countries are the engine for technical development. They still work with a big creativity every day to repair any kind of devices. They use the same spirit like our society during the industrialization. Our throwaway society slow down our technical development. To stop this, my guideline is don't stop dreaming, think big, try everything. Don't care about your failures. Maybe you are the next one who will went just beside the next stop of our future. One big point in our philosophy is education. Uh, we have a very, very curious situation in our country, in other countries, that a lot of people are able to use equipment they are able to use an iPad, they are able to use an electronic camera, but they don't know how this device is functioning inside. This is one very, very big point. You can only invent new devices and you can only invent new technologies if you know how they work. This is one reason why I'm very, very proud to be here and uh, was able to have a look on all these uh, people and inventions here around our table. Thank you for this at, at first. Uh, a main point is that our education system in Germany has a big lack. A big lack in teaching crafting, teaching how to do things by my own. I never learned in school how to build things. I only has been taught about how, who invented it. Uh, I only have been taught about how... Hello, it's a bit loud. Can... Only, only been, been taught about uh, who invented it and when it was invented. But I've never been taught about how it will work and uh, how can I build it by my own. The next big point, point is that we never te are going to teach technology. We are teaching times, dates, names but no technology in school. And uh, one big point is information hiding. A lot of young children uh, have been taught to hide information from the neighbor because his, uh, his, grade, will be, his grade will be better if, if he's going to or she is going to hide information from the other one. And this is a barrier we, we like to break. We are going to share information we advise people to share information, to give them knowledge, how a, a device will work, how I was able to get it, get it to work, and how you can get it to work and build it by your own. Now, we will show you some of the greatest stuff out of our workshops. And I will start with my first steampunk project. It was my steampunk keyboard. This is no industrial design. This is really handcrafted. Sure, it's not perfect, but it's so shiny and bright yet that you don't recognize the small mistakes. I see them, but you're not. Why I built this keyboard? Hmm. It's well known that the black, gray, and white commodity input devices made of cheap plastic 
do not offer any style and comfort in the use of calculators and devices. To change this and my daily life in my work environment, I built this keyboard. The basis is an old IBM Model M keyboard. This is the only one which offers a great clicking sound when you're writing. The buttons are out of three old typewriters from Continental. Um, they built in the 1920s. I recycle all parts of the typewriters so the date of the typewriters is acceptable. Um, the frame is made out of brass candle holders. You find them sometimes on some boards. Here you see a night view with LEDs powered up so you can work at night without any problem. For the light arms, I use brass pipes and ship belts out of the model making shop. This is a detailed view on the light switch and below you see the status lights. The costs and the construction time. Uh, the key figures about cost and time is that I spent around 250 euros in this project and over 270 hours of work. Be sure, if you build any sand a second time, you only need 50% uh, of this time because um, I, I make detailed construction plans. So if you want to build something again or you use my construction plan, you will save this time because you don't make my mistakes again and don't waste time and on small issues you can solve at the moment. This is a really great project. End of last year, two things bring me to build this laptop. The speech of Hans-Peter Uhl, a politician in Germany, about the Federal Trojan, in which he mentions that the computer of bad guys and hackers becomes more and more sophisticated and refined. He makes some nice quotes in his speech, which I will let you know. He say, for example, the computers of those criminal elements are become more and more tinkered. And the best thing was, whoever used the internet will die therein. Unbelievable. That's a real politician in Germany, and you see that they have no idea about internet and computers. The second reason was that I po uh, post on the Clockwalker website. My friend um, out of the Rocha Salon um, says that steampunk is often not political enough. In combination, it was clear to me that I need such a device. It was on me to close the gap between steampunk technologies and politics. So now be sure that this machine will play an important role in achieving the world's complete world domination. And it's on my hands. <laughs> so. Stay tuned for more Mad State Steampunk stuff. Here you see a detailed picture of the automatic fold-up keyboard with the frame of a wooden profile timer. Uh, the keys are made of cheap buttons for closing and I glued some laminated paper in for the keys. I always missed soft touch palm rests on my keyboard. So it was the best chance to build some, some of them. And they are very comfortable and you can ride with it many, many hours. On the left side, you see one of the handles. Um, here you see the speaker. Um, I use the original overall speakers and fit them in copper T tubes. And to boost the power of the sound, I use brass horns, like from old gramophone. Because I don't get Linux running, I use a modified XP desktop. Um, behind the keyboard, you see the E10 um, bulb sockets from normal light. Um, this is a special feature. Without the white key, you can't start the laptop. Um, the key is so unique because you can only stick this key in this hole and it needs the right length. Without the key, you can never start again this laptop. Be below this 
uh, key, you see the flap for the CD-ROM. It's all always activated. Again, something about the costs and the time. I spent 280 euros in, in this project um, without a laptop because it's a very, very old one I have still in my corner. And I need 150 hours to build this. What do you think? What can you do with a normal flickering light bulb for three euros um, out of the home store? Enter. And the disposal camera, um, which is thrown away in the past. You can build a plasma curler based on the invention of my friend Mr. Unifor and his research in the field of high voltage I succeed to boost the plasma power. The plasma turbulence unleashes the power of plasma and makes you stare into the plasma fire for hours. So you get hypnotized. With the help of a wall clock gear which has been converted into a reduction gear and a high voltage module out of the disposal camera and the bulb filled with noble gas, in this case helium and argon, this construction is the latest type of plasma tool. On the left picture you see switches for the high power and the gear engine. Below some potentiometers for the rotation speed and the plasma intensity. At the right side you see a detail on the reduction gear and the plasma contact. Again, something about costs and time. This was a really, really fast project. I only spent 25 hours in it and only 35 euros. This is my latest project. Um, this was the first time in the history of my workshop that I'm able to create live. Yes, real live. <laughs> it's the first time that these prehistoric crabs are live again in my workshop because I built a sea monkey aquarium. You know it, in the past, when you are young, you always want some of these sea monkeys, but I think it's, it's in the same way like in, in my past, the crabs die after some days. So I try to, to make a real tank for them and, and spend them a long life. Um, after several setbacks and failures, I just finally succeed in a high complex tank. Some of the, uh, the high salt concentration was the beginning of many problems. Some of the materials are not resistant enough and starts leaking. Now all technical difficulties are eliminated and the system runs fine since week. On the left picture, so see, you see the three-way filtration system. One bulb is filled with activated carbon. This, this guarantees a long life of the crabs. Behind the filter system, you see the pump tank. It's with a bull's eye, which, which is not on the picture. It's to con uh, check the water level. On the right picture, so you see the ultra-bright white LEDs for illumination. On grey days or by night, you can illuminate the tank with, with these ordinary lights and they look very, very good. I fit them into F connectors from satellite receiver and they guaranteed a good style also with LEDs. Above is the ventilation system. Uh, it's really necessary to make many, many um, air in, in, into the water because the crabs need some of them. Um, and it needs them over the complete time. Um, in, the, in the past, I only used uh, a stick to turn the water around, and it's not enough for the crabs. You need really and much oxygen for this. This is an overview about all parts. I just checked the development of the crabs. 
In the upper right corner, you see the cabinet with a 6 volt accu and a 4.5 ampere power battery. A solar panel for battery changing secures a lifetime operation. This is a close-up picture through a magnifier glass. Maybe you can see the small gray dots. These are the crabs in our early stadium. The tank has a flue extraction to minimize the deposits and guarantee a long life. These are some pictures by mice. On the left picture, you see a multiple color changer. Um, this guarantees a high contrast observation of the crabs. On the right side, it's an illuminated tank by night with so white LEDs. The cost of this project. I spent 135 euros and over 90, 90 hours because of the several setbacks and failures. I'm finished here and I hope I see you tomorrow in our workshop area where we show these parts directly and you can look inside and we explain you in detail how we built this. Now my friend Horatio's team will show you the best stuff out of this workshop. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I will tell you a secret. It was his third presentation for such an auditorium. So, thank you very much. I'm a home constructor, I'm an inventor, uh, a builder and a traveler nurse. My name is Jochen Enderlein, I was born in Hamburg, I'm living near Hamburg. Uh, I'm working for a big company from Canada doing software and I need something to do for my hands in my free time. So a couple of years I built a computer with a dragon on it with gleaming eyes and uh, a copper housing and after a couple of days my daughter came down the stairs and said, hey dad, what you're doing there is steampunk. Steam what? And I did some researches in the internet and was, in, was infected completely by this genre. This was my assistant, uh, Mr. Brain. He had a very bad accident a couple of weeks ago and uh, we have to protect him and his knowledge inside, uh, inside this glass bulb. Uh, Dr. Brain is a computer and it's a real steampunk project. Maybe it's a double steampunk project. The first part is um, uh, the evil mad scientist design, taking a brain as a calculator. <laughs> the second one is recycling. Inside this machine, there's an old motherboard running with uh, 600, 800 megacycles with 512 megabytes of memory and a 230 gig compact flash card booting Windows Millennium. This Windows Millennium was the only operation system that was able to drive the LEDs inside, inside the brain showing the CPU load. <laughs> so you more, the more CPU load you, load you have, the more LEDs will lit up. And it's very, very colorful even in the night. You can Skype with it and it's very scary for other people uh, seeing a guy sitting in front of a brain talking to another guy sitting uh, at the other end of the world. It looks very, very amazing. We are using this as well for uh, live action rule games as a teaser for, for the gamers as well. Uh, steampunk is not expensive. It was 90 euro and 50, uh, 55 hours of work to build this brain. This is my newest project. I'm a bit proud of it. It's a ticker machine. Uh, I, I like modern technology and uh, old technology. And this device prints emails. It stands on my desk. And if someone knows the email address and the secret code to put in the subject area, he is able to send me, he's able to send me uh, a mail to this. 
and it will be printed. I can read it and archive it in the folder, for example. Um, here you see uh, two details, uh, the CPU. Below this uh, glass dome, there is a, a complete computer running Windows uh, XP and uh, a special version of Thunderbird with a plug-in that prints email automatically if a special subject will be there. And the notification bell is not a bell, it's an amplifier <laughs> and a speaker and are just playing a bell tone by the sound card to this device. And on the right hand, right hand side corner you can see such a ticker tape. You can see it live on our desk and yes, tomorrow in the workshop you will be able to send uh, emails to this device if you like. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was a bit expensive uh, due to I blew up a motherboard by accident. So I have to buy another one and these motherboards, 12 to 12 centimeter motherboards are quite a bit expensive. Yep. This is a very, very cheap steampunk project that everybody can build. And uh, it's for an iPhone or an, another mobile phone that has a speaker on the uh, lower right corner. And you see, it's uh, on the left hand side, it's in, in the holder, and you see the hole where the voice goes through the tubes. And yep, just let's try it. You can use an old horn as well for this. Okay, so it's not so loud. And it's only a physical effect inside the horn. It's very, very low tech from these old gramophones, and you can build it by your own for your iPhone if you like to do it. So. Okay, thank you for this. And it's very, very cheap. 19 euros with, for the paper cone and the water plumbings and uh, a little bit of work. Last is Captain Nemo's lamp. Uh, it's an idea of having this warm light of these vintage bulbs at home and on my desk. You can, yeah, uh, some, some details. The copper is, uh, uh, the copper uh, can, be, can be bought in, in every, uh, every tool store, if you like, in Germany as well. And here are some details about a dimmer and a switch. You can see it on our, uh, on our table as well. And yeah, 120 euro because these bulbs became very, very expensive up to now. One of these bulbs are around eight euro now. Because it's not allowed to manufacture them anymore in Germany, for example. You're not allowed to, to, to bring it in into the country. Mm -hmm. And um, our last project I like to present uh, is a goggle. Uh, steampunk is nothing without a goggle. You have to use it and you have to wear it. It doesn't make sense to wear it over there, but you have it, have it there. But it's also used in movies. Do you know this guy? It's Bela B. Who knows Bela B? And he wears my Google. <laughs> in, in the movie Der Sandmann from, uh, from LTA Hoffmann, it's a movie project by Andreas Dahn, good friend of mine. And he asked me a couple of years ago, can you make such a Google for me? And I built it for him. Uh, and he used it, really he used it uh, in the movie. I, I saw the movie and said, that's from me? <laughs> it was amazing. If you have a chance to look the movie, the movie is very, very, very nice. Yeah, some details. Everything is handmade from this Google and as well from the tool store. And the costs around, if you buy these items in stores, you have to spend 120 euro. But 
if you grab them from the from the rubbish, from the garbage bin, you will pay around three or four euros for the extra parts, and you don't have to pay nothing. Okay. Uh, for the links to our projects and communities, the Clockworker, our homepages, and very, very, very other nice homepages where you can find a little bit more materials. And meet us tomorrow at the workshop, workshop area, if you like, between 10 and 12 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. Do we have some time for questions? We, we have some time for questions. No questions? Great. Okay. Then thanks again. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Did you ever plan to actually visit schools? Because you were talking about uh, educating children? I'm doing this. All right. I'm doing this, yes. I'm doing workshops. So if you like, you can book me. <laughs> I'm doing this for charity. OK, any other questions? OK, so thanks again. Have fun in this very, very great area. Thanks. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, share your knowledge. <laughs>